a bit of a time traveling through the frigid north brutal cold and blizzards finding a place to rest and having a bit of a campfire conversation telling stories and little bit of details finding out that the platypi was in fact invented by one of volmer's insane fucking ass friends eventually though during the night seemed like some ice woven creatures wanted to get a bit of a snack of the party smelling the blood from your previous battle and drawing in close and while they proved to be Annoying, they weren't the worst thing in the world before they had to run as something else was approaching. Rather than fighting that creature, he also said, fuck that shit, and just ducked on out of there. Traveling along with Veril's aid to find a much safer location of some kind, by sheer happenstance and luck and a goddamn natural 20, uh, Abilene was able to sense one of the roots of the Halderwood trees, to which... Following that track and finding sanctuary for the time being led to one of the trees being fallen. But not just fallen, but being completely and utterly splintered off of its trunk. In dismay and hopelessness, Linnea and Abilene simply approached and opened up the little bit of a sanctuary that was available. And just walked on in with all of you behind. To which we pick back up with them simply, quietly, meekly, and quite reserved... Just making a campfire for everyone to rest upon. And that is where we pick back up. Within the cold, but at least sheltered sanctuary from the blizzard. Where the exit, as per before, covered in a layer of ice. And this entire place seems to have what used to be materials or uh, furniture of some kind that have long since degraded and decrepit away to ages of time. But... Does anybody have any plans before the long rest? One clarification. So, this tree was busted. Was it busted near the base? Or was it busted higher up? It's rather low onto the actual okay. log itself. Okay. Well, sort of I base. would say if you kind of gave it a quick estimate from what like glance you had of it, it's about 40 or so feet climbing up high which given the length of the tree that you saw is relatively nothing in comparison and then it was also ripped out of the ground stump it was not the stump is still there perfectly oh the fine. stump is there okay i thought yeah. the stump was ripped out also. it's straight up just shattered off of the stump okay so we could climb the 40 feet up mm -hmm. to where that break point was if we yep. wanted to okay interesting But, unless anybody has anything they want to do for the night besides Volmer who seems to go off onto his own corner again to play with his sword privately and furiously <laughs> god damn it Don Mark, go ahead and make me a wisdom saving throw for me real quick uh oh advantage as always or no yes Technically a plus two. Okay. While trying to rest and during this quiet time with the crackle of the fire, just trying to relax, mend your wounds and whatnot, there's this unending piercing feeling in the back of your mind. And every time you fend it off, but there's always this sense that it's getting that much stronger. And then there's a flash. An instant, a recollection, circled around a bonfire, multiple other tribal folk at the base of a tree. Hmm. I'm going to meditate and ask my spirit to show that to me again. And Dalmar's just under the assumption that it was his spirit showing, showing that to him. Focusing on that spirit and letting him share what images he has within himself to you. It's a bit vague, it's a bit blurry, and it's a bit rapid. Almost like trying to recall an oil painting that's been smeared slightly. You can see celebration. 
some sort of ritual. And much cl more clarity with the tree itself. Not immense in size, but definitely larger than any standard tree that you've seen. Probably about 20 foot in diameter, maybe about 120 feet tall. Maybe 20 feet tall, you said? Or 120. 120. Okay. Guys, I'm, I'm getting a vision about this tree or another one. See, the ritual tribal peoples in celebration. He was about 120-ish feet tall at the time. From our rough estimate, how tall do we think this thing is, or was when it broke? You couldn't even see the proper diameter of the log itself, not even the the stump. There's also a blizzard going on, so your vision is capped out of like 50-something feet. So, in terms of... Hold on, hold on, hold on. So we, we followed this log. Like, how long was it that we followed? Like You followed it for about 30-something minutes before you reached its end. Okay, so... We're, the, this tree is like at least 500 feet tall. Uh, even more than that, like a thousand feet tall. At that point in time. Mm hmm. Fucking hell. So, yeah, so. Here's kind of a picture from. You said the Redwoods, aren't you? No, from the Avatar movie, the Tree oh, of Life. Oh, yeah. How, the how is the tree compared to that? If you want to think in reference, the log is more planar to the ground. The roots aren't visible like this one. Maybe the diameter is roughly the same, but the actual thickness of the tree itself is definitely nowhere near that. It's more long than it is thick. Okay. God damn it, Fen. Sometimes Aww. you just don't get the girth. <laughs> Pencil dick. Mm. Okay. Are you saying, like, your people used to live around these things, too? Possibly. Hmm. You can see that Ablon and Leia have just, like, they're not even paying attention to this conversation. They're just zoned. Shrin is gonna make tea for them. Take it, though, kind of wordlessly. Uh, Linnea does at least kind of give you, like, a little gesture of, like, thanks, but doesn't even speak. And then, um, in one-on-one -on -one comms, I'm going to, um... Uh, with Jack, I go, actually, I'm starting to suspect that Lene and Avaline are actually part of my people. Might be the same tribe, I'm not sure. Only they'd be half-elf, but they clearly speak the language. And my spirit also has some connection to this place as well as do their ancestors. I don't think that's a coincidence. I can't remember, did Dalmar ever share what Linnea and Abilene were talking about when they were talking? Not, not the exact moment, 
but he seemed he shared a conversation that nobody else understood. So he never specified as to what the language was, but yeah. But it was also a language we've heard him speak. Yes, to a certain extent. And a language Ashrin spoke for a few days. Four days. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's interesting. I don't know what to do with that information, though. Same. Where. Where are, like, Kalistars now, though? I don't know. Does your spirit know where they went? I've asked my spirit that before, right? And he ATK? has only ever really pointed towards finding the Plains of Hallsworthy, and that's it. Okay. Plains of uh, and I believe you did try to ask in further clarification as to where that would be. And okay. after researching and not being able to find it and asking him again, he doesn't know because that's where he died. And at that point, that's where his knowledge cuts out. Right. It's an odd coincidence. Where else would haltered wood trees grow than on the plains of Hallsworthy? That's a yeah. fair point. Plains of Hallsworthy, that was a name that the player forgot, actually, until it was just brought <laughs> I up. I have not noticed it either. I... Because it was Dalmar's information, I didn't write it down, so it's not in my vast knowledge of... So to answer your question, um, I don't really know. My spirit mentioned something about the Plains of Hallsworthy. I think that's where my spirit died. Has Jack ever heard that name? Nope. We'll... I knew one member of my family long enough to learn the language, and that was it. I've never had much communication with my people. What? Okay. Had... Does your spirit maybe remember of any, like, buildings, castles, civilization in the area? Plains of Hallsworthy? I'll ask again, but it showed me uh, tribal peoples and it showed me uh, civilization in the jungle. People's in, in the wait, um, player of clarification. Mm -hmm. When Spirit was showing me the jungle, was he showing me a people's in the jungle or just the location itself? A mix of the of the two, almost like it was more okay. of a hunting party traveling through the jungle. So while it didn't seem like they resided in the jungle directly, they were at least close enough to consider it their hunting grounds. Okay, and I'll relay that to Jack. And then I'll ask my spirit for details on any civilizations or castles that may have existed in the area. Sense a bit of pride in him. Something that you haven't felt in a very, very long time. Probably since your last felled champ, like, monstrous creature, really. Where you get the visage of in fact, castle walls that have been broken down, shattered, and torn asunder. And with tribal folk standing victorious upon that rubble. Hmm. I see a shattered castle wall. Tribal peoples that are victorious. 
My spirit had a sense of pride. Okay. That was a check to see if Jack had put together the planes of Hallsworthy and the Halderwood. <laughs> Since that was something Ashton said out of game. Can I start the game, not 20. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for all nat ones from here on out. I for, fucking last session I couldn't roll above a five. <laughs> um. <laughs> so planes of Hallsworthy, the Halderwood, possible that this place before it became the Fridge of North was that. Mm. Um. Just to guess, I mean the names are similar enough. Because you've also shared that, like, the planes themselves got completely raised in, like, fire, right? Essentially speaking, once the Age of Chaos came, there's a reason it's called that. Yeah. Shit was getting destroyed left and right. So, we know we can send, like, mental images. Can you send me what that castle looked like? This comms? Yeah, and I'll do so. Hmm. Now, Jack just read that story. He didn't have any visions or anything, right? Mm-hmm. Any descriptors seem familiar between that story and this? Nah. Nothing? This just looks like your generic-ass kingdom that probably just started up. Probably some king decided he owned the land built up a wall, built up a castle, and then these tribal folk came in here and they said, fuck your shit. Okay. If we confer with Volmer, would what he saw in the scrying, any of that line up? The architectural? Nothing. Okay. No. Okay, so most likely it is a whole other fucking castle that they don't know about or was built after the Age of Chaos. Oh, there goes Ashen. Ashen's deed. Oh, death. Oh, a death. She's back. back. Fen has become the DM. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel? Quickly, level us all up. <laughs> level 20. Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, uh, I don't know what to do with this information at this point in time, <laughs> I mean, maybe bring it The other little tidbit that. that you're slightly forgetting is the fact that Linnea and Abilene did say that if rumors are to be believed about the Frigid North is it once was a standard continent that floated to the north before coming this hellish ice scape. Oh, so it broke off of one of the other ones or whatever? Um, if... I think the rumors were that it was its own continent and the whole continent uh, somehow shifted. Mm-hmm. Like... How fast did it shift, though? Abilene and Linnea said it was during the Age of Chaos, and the Age of Chaos lasted somewhere near 200 and something years. Between two to 300 years. There's no agreed upon day as to when they stopped dying, but they kind of just came to an agreement saying, We're not dying anymore! <laughs> okay. Do we have any idea, like, where it used to be? As if it was like closer to fuck, what's in the middle? Isn't Boris Land in the middle? Uh, no, Beezlock is in the middle. Yeah, Be okay, Beezlock. So if it's closer, if it was closer to Beezlock and then went up that fucking far. <laughs> You're doing Ashen's mm. job. You're connecting the web. <laughs> it's... It's just, I'm thinking, like, okay, is it another island situation? Like, that, you know, city was in the uh, Fargrave? Or did 
some god, because I mean that's the only other thing I can think of is some god or demigod literally move that continent themselves. Because tectonic shifts wouldn't move it that fast. That's what my mind's going through. But um, uh, sh what do you think, Dalma? Should we bring everyone else in on this and just kind of do what they think? Because I don't know what to do with that information right now. Uh, sure, why not? Okay. And go ahead and info dump with Dalmar. <laughs> Everyone's up to speak. If I recall correctly, everybody was in that mental calms, right? Yeah. Including... Yep. Linnea and Abilene. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we're just gonna share. Sure. Sharing is caring. honestly what I would have done is just started talking to him and Corey. <laughs> <laughs> well, Delmar's background um, gave him the instinct of keep it secret, keep it safe. Right, but at this point we're gonna yeah. share. So. Yeah, like that. That was his like. I don't know what to do with it. Maybe I can learn something interesting, especially since they don't know I speak their language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm a little shit. I would have just popped up and been like, hey, <laughs> what you talking about? <laughs> I probably would have done the same thing, to be fair. Yeah. But with the info dump being let out for everyone to acknowledge... And while Misha is completely and utterly fucking confused on the idea of a continent moving halfway across the planet being possible. She's a dog druid. Like, <laughs> what? I don't, I don't know what's more weird. Continent. I can't, I can't move a big rock up a mountain. How does a big rock the size of a world move an ocean? Gods. They were magic. Gods. Really, 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 really powerful magic or gods. Uh, anyone got any ideas? Thoughts? Concerns? Head empty, smooth brain? <laughs> Delmar and Meryl. Hmm? God, Hello? Delmar, you're fucking passive inside being fucking 22. <laughs> <laughs> Paranoid fuck. Yeah. <laughs> there is no visible reaction to Abilene or Linnea listen to this story, and they kind of in agreement with you all, kind of like. What are we supposed to do with this information? But Delmar, from at least Abilene's perspective, far more nervous and jittery than her sister, you can note that she is more than usual. She's usually looking to, uh, to Lana, Linnea for one, way, one reason or another, but after hearing this story, those eyes dart just more often. Even if for only half a second more often than before. She's just lingering more and more on her sister with this information having come to light. Mm. They're hiding something. Yeah. But. Unless there's anything else anybody wants to talk about. That you all lay down to get some rest, to finally recover yourselves. As each of you lay down for the night and things get quiet, only the crack hold of fire. Feral. In that sleep, in that darkness. You once again hear more echoes, hear more voices, hear Jen 
yet again. I promise I'll find a way. You know that, right? I won't stop. Wait, can I speak to Jen in this dream? Maybe. If you try focusing on it. I'm scared, too. <laughs> <laughs> Turn into a demon and kill us all in our sleep. Oh, I would cry. TPK. TPK. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. As a player, I'm just like really scatterbrained. I've been up since like 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need to stop doing that. Hey, I do it. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> I support wrong decisions. <laughs> you shredded. You support women's rights. I support women's <laughs> wrong. Oh my god. You're dumb. <laughs> okay. But, do you do anything when you hear these echoes? Can they, like, move themselves? Or is it, like, a really, like a dream state where, like, you can't really, like, control your you own body? try. Oh, I'm scared to do that. Ah... <laughs> <laughs> uh, one second. This is determined whether they do it or not. Okay, they're gonna try moving. Go with some check for real quick. Um. I could. I... Did it go through? They don't get the plus two. It did not go through. No. Uh oh. Let, let me see if I can see it here. There we go. Oh, yes, okay. I see it there. I can see 22. it. 22. Very nice. But 22, kind of focusing on whatever these echoes are and trying to, to see what's going on, you come back to a time when three of you, you, Jen, and Sparky, were just trudging your way through the snow heavy footfalls at each one she's just trying to keep conversation going trying to keep each of you mentally aware trying to push through exhaustion you do feel you do have exhaustion on you which means you are days into this journey as you look over to see her just clutching herself as tight as possible with her coat what do you try to do uh. Um, dang, I didn't think this far. <laughs> I didn't think I'd make it this far. <laughs> I thought something bad was going to happen. Okay, um, shoot. I'm just not in it today. Uh, <laughs> I guess they'll try just saying Jen, so at least like, they know that they can talk freely. I don't know. They're testing this out. Because it's scary. You call speak. out her name. You call out for her. And she would turn her head in your direction. Not looking directly at you. Trying to keep an eye forward and keep an eye on you. I promised. I will help us. It's my fault. No matter the cost, okay? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> blurry. But I was a little focused on blurry. Ash. Sorry, it was there like, oh, yeah. I don't know what <laughs> was going on there. Focus. <laughs> <laughs> Throw, I'll make a wisdom statement throw. Yay.
15. It's not going to roll 20. I'm going through, but I can see it. I can see it on your end. I can hack into the system. <laughs> with a 15, even with Jack's plus 2. It doesn't actually get it. It's only when I'm conscious. Oh! Yep. Good to know. Yippee. With a 15, as you respond to that, you hear once again that unsettling voice. Ew. Whatever it takes, then, you'll give up the past. And in that moment, you feel the Hate snow everything. beneath you vanish. The world around you go to blank nothingness. And while you still feel that exhaustion, that brittle coldness, Girl's you're just in a void. Make a wisdom saving throw. Ah. Eleven. Oh, eleven. You struggle. Okay. You try to... F hmm? Nothing, nothing. Keep going. Okay. You try to fight against you, try to wake yourself up, but this time, unlike before, you feel yourself locked in those shackles. You. And in seemingly a moment, as you blink, a figure appears in front of you. It's you, but your hair pitch white. Your skin, instead of a light tan, is definitely now far paler, almost like you've lost blood in your body. Oh no, my melanin! <laughs> and you hear it speak in that voice <laughs> I can give you it all back you can recall every instant from the moment you were born to the moment you die you can help her at any cost I'm... I don't trust you. Can I make a perception... Per, what's the word? Insight. Insight. Go ahead and make an insight check. Where are you? Here you are. 22. There's clearly some evil intent in there. There is no doubt about that. And yet, at the same time, there's truth to the words. And if anything, I'll say with the 22, you feel that there is sort of no argument, no surprise, that this thing is exactly what is holding you back from that information. He's offering it because he actually is the one keeping it from you. I know you're the one holding all of this. I don't. I. I, I know. I hold the key to the gates. The gates of truth. The gates of your life. I am more than willing to hand it over for some cooperation. I just don't trust that. <laughs> One does not need trust when making a deal. One simply needs to know that it will be honored in the end. I... I, I really... This, this, this whole, like, trust and you don't need that, it's like a deal, it's a deal. Okay, I'm not from your guys' kind of thing where you guys honor that. I'm just from, like, the forest or whatever. Either way, that's... The <laughs> Fucking Jack. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. God damn it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't trust that you're not going to hurt... You know, my friends. People I'm close to. I just, I don't trust that. And I don't trust that you won't backstab me. And yet here I am. Offering you. 
Mm-hmm. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> we'll see. Perhaps your friend will be more amicable to an offer. I. What is he? Is he, t- is he talking about Jen? As far as you can tell. As far as you can tell. I don't know if she'll say yes. She won't have a choice. If you're not there. Make a wisdom saving throw. You're disgusting. You. In that instant, Bro, sorry, you guys. feel your body start to move. Mm. Delmar, with your passive perception, it's more than easy enough for you to feel Veril start to shift among y'all sleep. And he just starts walking towards the exit. Starts walking. Calmly. Oh, fuck silently. no. Oh, fuck no. Uh-uh. You just had to remember. Out loud, I'm gonna go. Veril, what are you doing? And also, a short instant, you also notice that the entrance is open and Lelay and Abilene are not there. Nope. I'm going to. Um... Nah, I'm in pursuit. F this. <laughs> As you, uh, said, out you said and... I felt a shift. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mm-hmm. Nope. And as you call out to Veril. It is not hard for everybody else to kind of stir awake to that instant. Hear the voice ringing out in this chamber, loud as can be. And you just see Dalmar approach Veril from behind. Are you doing anything? I'm pulling up, uh... Where? So, I'm going to do the thing where I'm going to grab the arms and pull them behind... Okay. Uh oh. Feral, make me a quick strength check. Or rather, pull back and up on the elbows. Strength. Do I have to? And Delmar, give me a dexterity check. Uh. Oof. That's technically a yay, but. That's. Five. Mm Bulls are not showing up. Okay, there we go. You still beat Veril's five. <laughs> as in that instant, as you all are getting up and seeing this happen, you just see Dalmar instantly take Veril's arm and twist it to his back. Jack, you want to say something? Wouldn't Volmer have seen Abilene and Linnea get up and leave? He's, He's still trancing. But even during trance, you're aware. You're of... semi quasi aware. You didn't hear them leave? Nope. Dalmar didn't even hear them leave. Dalmar's passive perception's insane! But, in that instance, that Dalmar, you take Volmer's arm and twist it to his back. Or, Veril. (laughs) Veril. Go ahead and just roll me a d20 real quick. D20? Yeah, just d20. And Dalmar's AC is a 17, so that's going to hit. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. nothing too bad as Dalmar, as you're holding on to Veril's arm behind their back, you feel something press against the palm of your hand. And in a single moment, you feel something pierce into your palm as you take two points of piercing damage. So, quick question. Did I get the healing from the long rest? No. 
This is not okay. long rest yet. Two points piercing damage. I don't like the sound of that. And you would hear a voice come from Veril, but not Veril's. That is just a warning. So I'm going to continue what I'm doing, only I have them by both arms. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull back and up, forcing the upper torso to bend. Like, like I'm literally doing like... <laughs> Like how the um, you're you're you're, you're making him season. present. Yes, you're ma you're making Veril present. Can I just take my shield and just back of the head and try and knock him out? Go ahead and make a strength check, and Veril, make a Constitution saving throw for me. Maybe. Well, it just does not want to transfer to D2. Uh, uh, oh, uh, not one. Refresh your yep. page on D&D uh, &D Beyond, and then when it refreshes, go to the features and traits and see if that uh, fixes it. Yeah, like have it update. Maybe it'll work. Yeah, it's probably that's... warmer sleeping in the plate than not. <laughs> yeah, partially. Especially with any fur lining he has with it. Yeah, I imagine there's just a lot of just fur just stuffed the fuck in there. <laughs> I can think of warmer ways to sleep. Yeah, probably not around all these people. Yeah? <laughs> That's why I have a two-person tent, damn it. In a single moment, it's all it really takes. Wherein you just back of the head on Veril. And in that instant, Veril, your world just goes dark yet again. But you still hear the cackle in that fading blackness. We just hear, I'm playing nice. That's Veril's just unconscious. Unconscious or sleeping? Do they get a unconscious. full rest? Unconscious? Jack just fucking bashed the shit out of the back of his head. There head. There head, yeah. thank you. I keep Can thinking I, of the like, entity. Go over to them and like open their eye to check it. Cause weren't their eyes black with demon before? Mm-hmm. You thread open the eyelid, they look standard. Alright. No demons. I think it's fine Linnea and Apolline. And over mental calm since they're still on it, or should be. Yeah, like 10 hours or that something? That doesn't fade if you go unconscious, yeah. right? Just double checking. I don't think Ooh, so. that's a good thought. I don't know. I don't know. think it has in the past. I don't think so. I mean, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I'm just double checking. Uh, da -da 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 -da. uh, number of hours equal. You can speak to them telepathically. Creatures don't speak common language. Nope. No, no clarification if he goes unconscious. Interesting. So you're good. Adeline, yeah. Linnea, where are you? It takes a moment. A little bit of a suspenseful, unwavering one. But you would hear a response come from Abilene. goes, We're talking outside. Why? What happened? We noticed you were randomly disappeared. We just needed to talk in private, that's all. Okay. Sight check. Is she lying? No, she seems to be telling the truth. She seems as uncomfortable as normal. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> okay. She's gonna go out to the side and see if I see him. You just see them almost literally on the ledge of where that slant kind of goes. You see the both of them just sitting there with their legs just hung above. Just whispering between each other. Or at least whispering as much as you can among a blizzard. Uh, let me be. Grab out my rope. We're gonna tie up Veril. <laughs> yep. We're at that point now. Before bedtime, we're just gonna tie Veril up. Can I tie them up? I've shown that I'm good at tying people up, as we saw with Volmer in the tree a while back. 
I was gonna make a joke. You can do some Shibari knots. Yep. <laughs> Den picked. Banned. <laughs> purely decorative, guys. That's not gonna do shit for keeping them in place. <laughs> but it'll embarrass them enough that they won't wanna- they'll just- they'll sit there in shame. No, embarrass the demon inside. They're gonna, like, ask Volmer to fireball them. <laughs> Put them out of their misery. Just end it now. <laughs> oh, speaking of ending it now, I just finished campaign two. Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Now you gotta watch the post adventure with Ukatoa. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But gotta get a full list of those so I can start on that. I think it's only three episodes. What two or three episodes, not long. Then you gotta do the uh uh EXU. There's a wrap up episode, right? There's a wrap-up episode, then there's the two um, ones where they came back and dealt with Ukutoa stuff. And then you gotta watch EXU afterwards to get Orin okay. and Fern into Campaign 3. Okay. Uh, half and half, yeah. I don't mind. It's more content. I also have to go sure. watch the Monster Hearts uh, game, one-shot. Because oh God. My, my RRL... Uh, group is gonna do a monster hearts one shot and they were like go watch it it might help you figure out how to play so <laughs> <laughs> but as you are tying Veril up and delmar the thing of note is that where you had Veril held and you felt that pierce the palm of your hand you can see that there is a notable cut in Veril's clothes So but it came from, like, middle of the arm. I'm going to point that out. Oh. Mm, that's not okay. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Is there the implications cut? of that are really gross. I don't like it. Yeah. Is there, like, a cut there on Veril's arm? Nope. Okay, so this You means... also remember the time that last time he came at you, or they came at you, in that first night in the sanctuary, they swung their arm and you saw a very quick flash of white from the palm of their hand and nothing. Can I, can I push on Veril's hand like you do with a cat on their claws and see if anything <laughs> comes out? <laughs> oh my god! And then push the toe because... <laughs> <laughs> Does anything come out? You get fucking Iron Man with some blast. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Veril has not gone part kitten or wolverine. Does it feel like there's anything in there? Feels like normal. Okay. And about the time you guys are finishing tying up and binding Veril, you do see Linnea and Abilene kind of make their way back in. They look at you so confused at why you are literally binding a teammate on the ground. Like, are we... Did you want to keep this private time? We can go back out. No, just a... Uh, just tie up the demon, it's okay. Precautions. I mean, I mean, if we're interrupting the foreplay, you can get back to it. <laughs> no, just uh, tying up a demon, it's fine. <laughs> don't worry about it. I don't think anyone does, but does it... Actually, I know Jack's also going to take manacles that he has. He's gonna use those and um, attach to feet and legs. Okay, we really did it with the foreplay. Um, no, that's why I start pulling out these. You'll pull out the ma magic vibrator and the uh, sparky feathers. <laughs> and he'll put that's those rock. That's a feather. He'll activate the vibrator. <laughs> Should sure I understand it? That's for now. She'll show you. Oh, oh I, I'd be more than happy to. <laughs> Maybe when we get some actual private room. Just saying. And you would see Abilene kind of like hit her shin with the end of her staff. <laughs> Trying to be Fanoa's <laughs> wingman over here. <laughs> Ashrin is fucking mortified. 
Okay. Can I just kind of like set Frankie on Veril's head for support? As soon as you take Frankie out and kind of just like have it set on Veril, you do see that Frankie's looking <laughs> around rapidly. Kind of like he's analyzing something. Hey, buddy. Yes. <laughs> you constantly forget he has that voice. What you what you looking at? Cave. Yeah, very astute observation. Good good job. I sense something from it. Why is this giving me why is this giving me like Aladdin cave with the lion's head kind of vibe? What cave of wonders? Yeah, it's giving me a real cave of wonders vibe, and I, and I don't know why that's coming to mind. But you see, anyway, fly off towards one of the more decrepit pieces of furniture on the ground, where you start to kind of like claw and gnaw at it. Can I go over and investigate with it? You see him just trying to break it. Just adamantly trying. I can break it? I'm so good at breaking things. If you could. Make a strength check for you real quick. 23. As you take this piece of what looks to be like some sort of leg chair, as you slam it onto the ground. The first impact seems to do near enough nothing. There's almost a moment of like, I am your master, Wood. You will obey me and crack it ever harder onto the ground. The second time you hear the audible crack sounding. And at that point, it's been kind of Linnea and Abelai kind of like, um, I don't know if that's the best idea. And you just, without a resort, just rear up and one more crack against the ground. As you hear the splintering sound of degraded wood kind of shatter upon all these little bit of splinters and pieces flying out about. And you just see the both of them kind of like, uh, cool. Yeah, no, that's cool. Just go ahead and destroy ancient architecture, you know, from the people of our past. That's fine. I so apologize for not asking <laughs> <laughs> permission first. Um... Frankie said he senses something in it, so... As you see that, you just see Frankie go to one of those splintered off pieces, and he just starts gnawing on it. The fuck you doing down there, man? Consuming. You want some wood? No, don't like that. <laughs> Why Why are you eating the wood of all things? Shh, is, he, is he eating the halter wood because it's super hard and he wants to get harder? <laughs> Does it work like that? Phrasing. Little, that little, dragon Viagra? Viagra? <laughs> little dragon Viagra? <laughs> little dragon Viagra. Little dragon Viagra. The fact you both went that direction. Sorry, I totally missed what's happening because my computer, like, froze and I turned it down. <laughs> so, that's what I came back to, is the dragon gnawing on the tree, so. <laughs> I broke a thing, Frankie started eating it. Yeah. Yeah. What did you break? Uh, oh, like I, of, a, a of a chair. chair. Oh, okay. It took three cracks of Fanoa really going for it to manage it, though. Oh, the mm. furniture must be made of that wood that they were telling us about? Yeah. And you do see Frankie just kind of continue to nod, and eventually you do hear the crack of the wood as he manages to get little bits and pieces into his mouth. <laughs> Frankie's bottom jaw just falls off. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's made of wood But I'm like kind of drifting their way back to the party, kind of like looking so confused at what's going on at a little wooden dragon eating wood, low-key cannibalism, Veril's now manacled and bound on the ground. I'm like, okay, you know, I knew you guys were, were really messed up going here to all places, but this, 
Yeah, this is an image. Can I try to eat a little piece of the wood? Don't. Oh, oh, no, Make a strange no. check. Can oh, she make an intelligence check first to see if she's really dumb enough to eat the wood? It's Ben. <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> With a 19, you instantly bite down on these splinters, and even though it's like a thin splinter, it's like not even the not even the thickness of your finger. You feel it cracked out. It's as if you just bit down on a blade. But you refuse to give in to that piece of wood. It's just a piece of wood. And you snap at it. And you use that force to snap it in half. It's gonna be a tough chew, but if you want to keep chewing, you can try. Does it... What does it taste like? Taste like? Mahogany? No. Oak. Hmm. Maybe some alder wood. So I've eaten trees before. Got it. Uh, we're just gonna spit it out because you know what? Splintery throat does not sound. I pleasant. knew that. I knew that Fen likes that to chew on pleasant. wood. <laughs> oh, well, no, Fen you pleasure. actually do. Fe I have. Asher. I have uh, firsthand information. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> All I was Where's thinking my is Fen was just gonna shatter her teeth on that fucking thing. It'd be worth it. <sighs> I can't mend that. <laughs> so, Frankie, Frankie Balf is strong. It takes him several bites and shoes, but he is slowly but surely mincing this wood. To be fair, I was expecting kind of like what Jack was, where he just it breaks him, <laughs> it just shatters him. <laughs> yeah, if she likes to bite things. She really shouldn't. Oh, and break things. And she loved the sound of shattering wood. This is not far out of the realm of possibilities for Fed. <laughs> not at all. I'm just gonna start <laughs> chewing on trees. Totally not a low-key thing I set up and didn't think it would pay off this way. <laughs> she 100% knows the bite strength of wood. Her dad was a carpenter. <laughs> he fucking, like, she just knew that this is oak and this is a softer wood. She sampled <laughs> all of them. Instead of binkies, I got scraps of wood to chew on. Yep. Yes, that wouldn't surprise me. Yep, when people have elven wines, I know I choose wood. <laughs> I'm now curious if Frankie did, like, break off, like, part of his jaw. Could we mending him? Does anybody have mending? Jack. No. That was old Jack. Not anymore. Oh, that was a four. Never mind, yeah. I want to say Volmer. I think I... Volmer has prestidigitation. I don't think he has mending. I thought he had mending also. Let's see here. Volmer, what you got? He does have mending! Okay. Because, yeah. like, those are the two most handy fucking cantrips. Yep. Ever. Like... They're so, well, useful. Oh. <sighs> But, while Linnea and Abilene kind of start slowly drifting their way back to their place to sleep while y'all are just doing things one way or another, strangely and awkwardly. Dragging, well, picking up Varel, bringing them back over. All tied up. Can we shit. go back to sleep now? Yeah. I imagine Ashran is just sitting on the fucking floor. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fen Frankie just keeps gnawing at those splinters. Like, he doesn't stop. He just keeps eating one after another. I swear to God, Are Fen, if we wake up in the Abilene? morning and Frankie's bigger because he ate wood, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> yes, uh, are Lene and Abilene still awake? They are. Can I go over to them? Because I, I want to ask mm -hmm. them about this wood now, because... Yeah. Hey, so, um, quick, quick question. Um, is there something, like, magic or extra weird besides the strength of the wood of the trees? If you believe legends and all the rumors and everything, I mean, natural materials gaining magical properties aren't unheard of. I mean, you got, like, mithril and stuff. 
that's pretty magical, even though it just came from the from the ground itself. So I wouldn't really be amazed. I mean, our ancestors never really talked about how the Halder Wood is magic. They just talked about how it just really can put up a fight against a sword and how it almost never breaks. Well, I guess in this case it can break if it's old and decrepit and takes uh, some hefty hits from muscles. That and some some chewing of a small piece, yeah. Um, all right, cool. Um, I'm gonna keep I mean, an eye on Frankie. I mean, also you gotta take into effect that after the Age of Chaos, a lot of stuff really kind of went cuckoo, you know. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, also, yeah, I guess okay. then, uh, can I bring up the subject? Uh, what is he? Okay, I've, I've so, been holding um, off because, you know, you guys have a lot of weird shit going on, but now that I'm watching a wooden dragon familiar eating wood, now I kind of feel like that's a point of concern. Yeah, so to make a long story short, kind of, I, I went to a place, a, a dragon lair cave thingy, I found him. He came alive in the sunlight. He was a little wooden guy. And we went on adventures. And then I found these people. And then we went to this weird dragon island thing. Dragon possessed him. And he's been alive since. And now he's he's my patron. And we're figuring it out. But so Noah changes her Facebook status to com it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> In a situation ship. <laughs> yeah, see, this is why I said I knew you guys had interesting stories because so many questions. Good ones. Yeah. Good ones. The dragon Long island ones. was yeah. literally a dragon. Calamity. Yeah, yeah dragon. I punched it. It had more dragons. I got to punch one of. No, did I... no, I stared it down. That's what it was. Yeah. Then we told you to leave it alone when the other thirty popped out. Wait, so was this a dragon island, or was the island a dragon? Both. Yeah, the island was a dragon that had more dragons on it. So that's where all the dragons have gone to? Yes. And other places, possibly. And you yeah. haven't gone to loot this place, why? And even Abilene almost perks up goes like, Because dragons. Serious. I mean, yeah. we... Did kind we did of kind of loot it. Loot it. We there was loot, a vault there. We looted an ancient civilization that was there and destroyed. But yeah. then we left. Because. Let's put it this way. They let us leave. Yeah. The dragon yeah. that was the island let us leave. And let you leave with that. As she points to Frank and just keep continuing gnawing on splinters. Maybe See, we're... here's the thing. Um, if they didn't try to let me leave with him, I very much would have died trying to murder a bunch of dragons. And they probably would have left me, so my body would just be there, eaten by dragons. So, if I get this straight, you're walking with a man who just died, someone who has a demon inside of them, a dragon... Statute that was possessed and granted life that let you leave when they could have killed you, and a man who talks to his sword way too often, both sexually and not, and a girl who could probably explode at any moment. And then you got muscles. Oh, yeah, I also um, popped between planes with my family. I'm from the Shadowfell, and yeah. I've been there! It's, I've it, met her dad, it was weird. Yeah. Also, to be fair, that dragon that was the island you can probably see through Frankie at some point, and also um, that other group with the angry twink. Um, Fulmer's got some little thing inside of him from him, where they can communicate. <laughs> she just looks directly at Dalmore and like, how are you the normal one? <laughs> this is an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. That's a good question. Because as far as they know, you really are the normal one. Yeah. <laughs> they oh don't know. God. 
They don't know how you're forming these I never thought bottles. of it this way as a player. <laughs> I never, I'm like, okay, this is just our group, and then when they explain it that way, like, we got some problems. This is our fucking group, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, normal people don't just become adventurers. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's true. Hmm. Delmar? He's not normal. <laughs> He's a criminal. Don't give all my secrets away. Can't hear you, KTK. Criminal, then a ticking time bomb. KTK, you're my no freaking fucky. No, like... I'm good for right now. I got it under control. Yeah! And sometimes she can go and explode on her own, and then we're extra fine. Yeah, I just took care of it outside. To be fair, like, she's never exploded around us. Like, at all. No, the only time that anything, like, super bad happened with my magic, I just gassed myself when I was up in the air. It's fine. I've been really careful with you guys. Yeah, it keeps things more entertaining, too. So even if something did Can't happen... Can't tell if I love your group more or terrified by it. Oh, you know you love us. Why can't it be both? I mean, if you want to have... Fair. Both? Add more to Why that. not both? <laughs> I used to have a genie sugar mama. It's true. How are you oh, the normal yeah. one? Just keep looking at Dalmar. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold up, is that how you came back? Yeah, kinda. It's complicated. It's very complicated. It wasn't a, like, wish scenario. Bring me back type thing. It's complicated. Okay, you, you and I may have more in common, but that's a private conversation. Moving on. Linnea? Moving on. No, no, I don't want to move on. Hey, hey, okay, we've shared our weird shit. You guys, yeah, and I'm sure that I have are... a fake boyfriend, okay? And so I'm a failure to my tribe. Your fake sugar daddy brings you back if you die? I wouldn't put it that way, but sort of. He brought you back with that low of health? Girl, you need a new daddy. That's still no. <laughs> That's not, um... If you let me be your daddy, I could probably get you some more health. Listen, you'd be my mommy. That's a different story. Uh, she could train you good, at least. No, I think I train her, but listen, sometimes you just gotta train your dom. Linnea's <laughs> <laughs> a brat! Everything that's going on right now. I love her! <laughs> yep. Love it. Holy fuck. By the way, this entire time, Abilene has been getting slowly redder and redder oh, and redder. Honey, I make her another cup of tea. She takes it so desperately. I make everybody tea, and then we probably should go back to bed. Yeah, that's, well, that's yeah, smart play. Yeah, let's stop this conversation. Let's go back to bed. You guys aren't planning on snicking out on us, are you? That was just to have a talk. We were nearby the entire time. Okay. And we gave you private time to do that. Points to Veril on the ground. It, are they gonna sleep well like that? They'll be okay. Um, I um, slept on a rock once and I was fine. They're they're okay. Oh, you find a comfort able to sleep rock on that a works. rock now and be fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, lay on hands for yeah, like two points just to get rid of the wealth on their head. <laughs> That would also stir them away, because they are still in an unconscious state. They're not asleep. They're still unconscious. What happened? Oh. <laughs> would Jack know that? Like, oh, uh, he's, he's been a uh, Yeah, no, yeah. yeah, Jack would know that, yeah. Okay, never mind. We're it's kind of standard I mean, knowledge where it's like... They're tied up. Wake them up. Anyway? Yes, Frankie is still munching. Yeah, We're going to wake sleep. up in the morning, and Frankie is going to be big. He's like it's gonna, gonna be grow so big. overnight. One day he can get big enough and he can give us rides. <laughs> It'll be like Sparky, but better. You know, I'm gonna open uh, up yeah. one one. Excuse Actually, me. you know what? I'm just gonna ask Frankie. Frankie, what are you hoping to get from that anyway? Are you just asking it blatantly out loud? Yes. Don't make me pester you again. He just ignores you. <laughs> one one comes. Hey. 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 Answer me. 
I want to. This is a thing. Make a wisdom check. Hey. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that was a bad roll. Frankie learned. Wait, a save Dollar. or a check? Check. Oh. Well, it's the same plus. Right? He actually beat you. That was that was a low roll, but he still beat you. Uh, even with a plus I, two? Even with, oh, it's a check, it's not a save. Oh, yeah, that's right. Check. Yeah, he uh, clicks save, but they're both plus two yeah, anyways. <laughs> uh, as you're pestering him... There comes an instant where, maybe after the fourth or fifth time that you just keep pestering and poking him, that you feel yourself forcibly shunted out of him. <gasps> Open up on one comms. Hey. Hey. Answer me. Hey. You feel yourself shunted out once more. Opening up on one comms. Hey. <laughs> hey. Oh my god. <laughs> Answer me. How much do you need to go what to sleep? What are you doing? <laughs> huh? What are you going to get? I'm going to fuck back out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As y'all are no. just seeing, Dalmar just focusing down on, uh, on Frankie, just constantly, just staring daggers at him. <laughs> this is amusing as fuck. Jax is watching. I'm cuddling back up into my giant metal man, who's probably very uncomfortable to cuddle with. And yeah, then after that, I'll, I'll, I'll some, all you have to do is answer me, and I'll Something stop. You out. No, I, I said that part out loud. He keeps ignoring you. What are you doing, Dalmar? Pestering him to answer me. Do you, do That's you want me where to ask? learned it. Oh. Can I join? <laughs> Don't even need comms. Jack will go right up next to him with Dalmar. Hey. Hey. Just out loud. And then mentally, you're like, what you doing? Hey, just Frankie's just gonna fall on the ground now that her pillow has rolled. Pretty away. much, yeah. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Frankie just grabs a, some chunk of the, the wood and just goes off to one of the carved out ledges that used to be for some sort of uh, cupboards or something, but has long since just decrepit and decayed. Hey. hey. Is it bad that I kind of want to go up there and try to lick him? <laughs> We have to go back to sleep. I need my rest. Yeah, as Jack and Dalmar are just completely foregoing their current rest. <laughs> At least for another 15 minutes or so, because this is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Barrage of mentally point, and Astrid has taken not only her blanket, but also Jack's blanket, and she's not going to give it back when he gets back. Yeah. He's going to sleep. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Frankie spends his time just gnawing on wood, just enjoying himself. <laughs> but, as everybody gets to go to rest... Hey, Vera, go ahead and make a constitution saving throw at disadvantage for me. <laughs> Yippee. Okay, let's see. Oh, did that still not go through? I saw it come up. That's an eight. That's an eight. And then 16, so it's an 8. So unfortunately, you do not recover from a long rest. You don't get a point of exhaustion, wasn't that bad a roll, but you do not recover a long rest. Oh, wait, they don't get a long rest if they're unconscious? They are in a very uncomfortable position, and they have a point of exhaustion as it is. You know what? Dalmar is in a tired blatant mood right now. He's gonna go, hey Linnea, you said you were a sub. Are they gonna have issues being tied up like that for long periods of time? Think you need to be a sub to know that. Kind of just I'm a asking. thing. <laughs> uh, they said you were a criminal. I kind of would have thought you would know that. Kind of that. That actually, you know, that almost seems like a torture tactic, even. I'll file that away for for later. <laughs> because apparently I'm the normal one here. <laughs> yeah, in character, out of character, I could have told you that that was going to be a problem anyway. Yep. <laughs> but, unfortunately for yeah. Beryl, as you have all left him, left them, sorry, restrained in such a uncomfortable, terrible manner, 
on the cold ground of a rooted tree. Everybody should else I can get their them... one. Huh? Should I give them Frankie blanket? <laughs> Frankie's busy gnawing on wood. Frankie does not stop. And even after you guys kind of go to bed and like rest, Frankie keeps going back to gnaw more. Frankie's a fucking statue. He don't need no rest. And does Vera at least get a short rest? Not like that! <laughs> Did they get a short rest before? I mean, you could still sleep relatively okay tied up. I would say no due to the fact of what visions Vera was having. But, as everyone else is able to get themselves a long rest as they desire, Good until yourself. eventually, I imagine y'all wake up in the morning to the sound of shackling iron and shifting body at Veril just on the ground, not feeling great at all. Are you fucking kidding me? No. I mean... It was out of love and concern. I want to die. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Demon and there's man. always... Hey, am I, am I, can I... Please? You could wild shape into a mouse. Oh, wait, no, you can't because you had to wild shape. I can't, I don't have any wild yeah. shapes. I'll, like, I'll undo everything and I'm realize just... You did... The demon took over and... Stabbed Dalmarv through your arm? What? Yeah. And I'll point to the hole in the shirt. Interesting. Can I be free now? Yeah, I already, already undid everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Jack's saying that as he's currently doing the manacles okay. and starting to loosen <laughs> the knots. Just Now I'll show you the cut that I got. Ooh. That's not as good. All... Okay, good to know. As you all wake up in the morning, and Lene and Abilene are able to kind of prepare you guys a very quaint breakfast, and even though they do kind of... Uh, Linnea looks over at Vera and was like, So, I take it you're the bottom. How was that experience? Don't talk to me right now. Not enough foreplay, got it. Do you gotta ask Vera, what were you dreaming about last night um just just uh when uh me and jen were just up on the mountain and i guess i just tried calling out for her and then it just kind of you know went down from there uh the 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 demon tried to Make a deal, make a deal with me again. Um, nah. Oh. It's it's really trying. You didn't say yes, right? I did not say yes. Like. <laughs> Veril, they're kind of stoic most of the time as it is. Okay. Um. If you have any more dreams about Jen, run away. <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise you're not going to get a good night's sleep for a while. Yeah. yeah. And lack of sleep can kill you. So. You don't say. <laughs> mm. It's just... during the breakfast, though, that you guys are having this conversation. That you eventually do hear the sounds of Sparky up top suddenly crying out, cawing loud, almost in a sort of defensive manner. Heading on the outside. Beryl's gonna head out, too. As you all begin to make your way outside instantly you see sparky who has 
wings up as the snow falls from their back. And you see about ten or so pure white-skinned goliaths marked with tattoos and tribal attire. All of them just surrounding the entrance where Sparky is, readied with rope-tied spears and seemingly were on the prowl to probably get themselves a good breakfast. Come around now and be like, ah, 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 ah. Uh-uh. Get your own bird! Does anyone speak giant? I don't believe so. Nope. No. I speak orc. No one speaks giant. Not even Misha, Linnea, or Aveline. As you go to bend them off, you do hear the boss, a cool. Better come! I'm just gonna look at him. Any of you speak common? And I'm gonna kind of stand up with Sparky, so I'm like in front of Sparky. With my arms out like this. And you do see kind of- you kind of hear the crackle of Sparky's electricity flowing through him. Just standing nearby. I'm gonna say, uh... Hey! Can any of you hear this? In Dwarvish. You see kind of just mutters and whispers going around between them. I think for the first time ever in this campaign, I'm going to say something in Orc and go, Alright, can anyone understand this? You see one kind of perk up in that instance. And you do see kind of them puzzling the words that you just said. I go like, You speak old settler. Some, yes. When you see him kind of like translate in giant to the rest of them a little bit. And you see him kind of just take about five steps forward, but still at the ready with one of the rope spears. Bird. Yours. Meal. Tomorrow. Not food. <laughs> They're not food, fish are friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was so about to say that too. Wait. Oh. What just happened? The giant... There are ten Goliaths that were at the ready with rope spears to try and capture Sparky for a quick morning meal. Oh, okay. And they did at the very least halt upon seeing the rest of you, and while they are trying to make conversation, only one of them seems to speak kind of scattered orc with, uh, with Dalmar. Does Volmer know tongues? I know he knows comprehend language. Oh, that's, that's a good question, written, actually. Right? Comprehend's written. Yeah, comprehend languages. No, comprehend oh. language is spoken. Yeah. But that doesn't allow him to speak, does it? Yes, it's only understand, yeah. But. As. Where's the wind? There's the wind. As. You see them kind of muttering and kind of passing along this message to the rest of them. Looks back to you, Dalmark. I was like, Why? Here. At. Root Tree. Needed a place to sleep. You. Go under. How? Some of us know how. Do you know what broke the tree? Persuasion check. Uh huh. Damn. 
all know Continent Crasher. Uh, player didn't catch that. Continent. All right. know Continent Crasher. What's the Continent Crasher? <laughs> Death. In what form? Mighty beast. Ashrin chimes in and goes, White? With wings? You know orc? I don't know orc. I'm just... Are you speaking in orc? You're not speaking in common? No, I'm it's speaking in orc. In oh, okay. Orc. Never yeah. fucking mind, then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Then in common, I'll say, he mentioned that the Continent Crasher broke the tree. Continent Crasher. Any idea? Said it's a one? beast. Was that mentioned when Cassandra talked about her father? Oh. Jack ever read any stories about something with that title? Go ahead and make an intelligence check. Why not? <laughs> I am also proficient in history. Has Volmer... He is also proficient in history. Do any of us know? Yeah. Make a history check. Yeah, go for it. Can I make one from travels? Are you proficient in history? I probably not. Then no. <laughs> Tip of the tongue. Tip of Even with Volmer sifting through all the knowledge they have. And it's more of a confirmation that nothing has laid claim to something the term of continent crasher. Mostly due to the fact that if something could crash a continent, well, even the dragons can't really come up to that title. I'll ask them, what do you know of the castles? Is there a castle in the area? There is an instant. Not quite offensive, but definitely virile reaction to the note of a castle. As you see him kind of ready himself a little bit more towards you, goes, You come from? Looking for. Why you seek? Facing old stories. You see him return to muttering with the rest of the Goliaths. Is there any other questions you want me to ask them? Ask them about the castle. They seem to have a reaction to that one. Volmer would understand one line that comes from this muttering of words between each other. Mainly being because the word is in definition celestial. To which he'd kind of perk up to say that. They're talking about a place that none can reach. Unless you're already doomed to die. Mm. Well, technically, aren't we all doomed to die one day at some point? I think they mean more in a literal sense. Like, you're literally on the verge of death. To which eventually the one that can speak scattered orc would go back to you, Dalmarco, like, 
You ready for death? Ready for death? What do you mean? Done. Leave. Ice. What about this ice? Castle of Ice. Then I'll be translating this conversation, by the way. Mm hmm. Lynn and kind of would like kind of perk up a little bit. Goes like, I mean, you guys are looking for a castle. Your friend's already dying. Got anything else to lose? No, just playing translator at the moment. How long have your people lived here? Long before ice. Claim land. We survive better. How did the continent become ice? Did the continent crasher do that? No. History lost. Don't care. Survive. That's fair. We have to be almost dead dying to find this place. Yeah, sounds like it. You have to be lost on the verge of death to find it. I hate that so much. Yep. Same time, he seems to be offering some manner of achieving that easier. Beating us half to death. <laughs> he did ask if you were ready to die. Like, if you were willing. Oh. Well. Jack is not. <laughs> he already died recently. He's not doing that shit again. Same. I don't particularly want to die. Well, at least one of us can see, and that's me. <laughs> I think. Perhaps. I'm dying anyway. <laughs> At a rapid pace. So I believe the answer to that question would be no. Yeah, no. You see them kind of in that moment relax a little bit and almost joining in unison seeing that instance before he speaks up once again and goes You search for castle Long, never find, until death. Till we're about to die, or, or until after we die? Near, same, difference. Oh, <laughs> Fair. That's a fair assessment. Alright, that's a dead end. Let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. I wouldn't mind that. It's fucking cold here. I am a red little fire tiefling. I do not belong here. <sighs> oh, well, they yeah. and Abline, uh, they Please do kind of well. prod you in the back, though. Dominic, I was like, you said they called this thing a root 
tree. Are there any other root trees around? Are there any other root trees? You seem like you curious. Many root trees. Little standing. Did the continent crasher kill them all? Not all. Many. Training. Is the continent crasher still alive? He awakes each cycle. What cycle? He means the year. Oh, I'm like, is it a lunar cycle? Or... Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Is it the oh, day, the week, month? <laughs> <laughs> this thing awakens like once a year or some shit like that? Sounds like it. Bacon's once a year beats up some fucking trees and then goes back to sleep. It wakes up, it rages, kills some trees, and then takes a power nap for a year. <laughs> that sounds like such a great life. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Except for the fact that it lives where it's cold. If I lived where it's cold and I woke up once a year and it was still fucking cold, I'd rage and kill some trees too. You should ask him where... This entity is. And when was the last time it was awake? Yeah, I'll ask those questions. You see him converse with the rest of the Goliaths, each of them kind of like conversing. You do see that it's a bit of an argument between each other, almost like they can't come to an agreement as to what exactly the final answer will be. Before eventually, it seems like a concisus has been met. He goes, No known. Resting place would kill if sleeping one month till cycle. Uh huh. Keep in mind, folks, that's some demigod level shit right there. Yeah. Bare minimum. Does the continent crasher go after your people, or just the root trees? Does not care. Sharpens fang on bone and root. Oh, son of a bitch. What? Is it a fucking Tarrasque? <laughs> Get out of my head! <laughs> Volver brought this up last week that. too. Is it a? F is it the fucking Tarrasque? We're, like... we're not ready to fight a fucking Tarrasque. We are level eleven. <laughs> Ask him <laughs> what the, this continent crasher looks like. What does the crasher look like? You see him once again ask around, and there are once again several words just being spattered about. Until eventually you can almost hear like this argument match go between these guys. Like they just, everyone's arguing mixed descriptions that no one can say figure it out. Like trying to describe like something you saw in a dream and everybody's just arguing the exact same fucking point. Until eventually the argument kind of comes just to a halt just because... They seem like they're about to ready to throw punches before they kind of like, oh yeah, we saw people here we gotta keep an eye on. Few see. Few live. All terror. Can I add Volmer to Minor Illusion a Tarrasque? Does anybody even actually know what a Tarrasque looks like? I was like? gonna say, let me see if Volmer... Yeah. Even knows what it looks like. Do, do we? Do any of us know what a Tarrasque actually is? I think Make an intelligence check for a Tarrasque in the first place. Nope. nope. So. Well, I mean, 
Warmer's aware of it. Keely would know it since it's, for all intents and purposes, the most dangerous siege creature on the entire fucking planet. What I need to roll for Jack is I'm pretty sure that would have been something he, like, 100% would have researched and looked into. I feel like it would still be an intelligence check only because uh, it was with Shadri's aid that that information was even found. Like, it absolutely be something he'd dive into. The name tickles. The name absolutely tickles. Like, every time this information brings up, it's like, that name, it, it's there, information-wise, nothing really. Okay. Say if Vomer even, like, has an image for what this thing is. I'll go with nature, because it's also intelligence. Vomer would bring up that he has seen depictions of this creature, none of them necessarily concrete, mostly due to the fact that, as they said, you see it, odds are you're fucking dead if you don't run. Calamity love that creature. And he would be able to, uh, minor illusion a visage of it. To which you would see once again another argument stir around with these Goliaths about what like what they're looking at. Until eventually there will be a, a minor concisus that they go where the orcish one speaks goes. Not same but creature can be brother excuse me aha uh aha -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. is there a creature like that Trask? as far as you're aware and even with Vomer's information there has only ever been on record one Tarask and one only. Yeah. There's only supposed to be one per plane. Yep. Is there any creature alive? Not to mention, I would say with one. Vomer's information on that 22 intelligence check is that it doesn't show up every year. Tarask shows up every, like, hundred years, give or take. Yeah. I knew that, but... So, Vomer can easily point out, like, so that doesn't fit the description... But <laughs> okay, it's still like Tarasca levels of fuck around and find out. So <laughs> yeah, probably shouldn't fuck around. As I said before, Jack's not ready to die again. <laughs> kind of around that time that you do hear one of the Goliaths kind of call out to the orc and goes, "You, no feed." On bird. No, bird is not food. Bird friend. <laughs> Survive. Good luck. And you see them kind of all this. You and your people as well. You see them kind of like just slowly scatter and walk away. And Abilene and Linnea kind of like, um, so are we just. You know, letting slip the highest odds you got at solving your friend's devil issue? What? I mean, you said they're kind of offering... I, okay, I guess, you know... They're offering to beat us into an inch of our lives to possibly find this one. From what I understand, they didn't necessarily... The information we were given didn't say that we had to be almost dead. It just said we had to walk without Ooh. a path. Yeah. I don't think we need to be dying. Beryl, you do recall, though, with little figments of your memory, is that you, you and Jen were on the cusp of just... Truly collapsing on exhaustion. You were out of memory potions. You were truly at the end of your rope for 
you assume you found what you were looking for before being ambushed, and then you had to leave before you got utterly murdered. I believe me and Jen were at a pretty bad state when I think we almost found it, to be fair. No. What I'm hearing is we do an all-day march to the point of exhaustion. Oh, well, Barrow's going to reach there first. Or we ask them to see if they have, like, another way. You know, they know the castle. Just saying. They mention, and, and I'll reiterate what they said, that there's no way to get there without dying. Without almost dying. Well, exactly. Almost dying. They can help you with that. Quicker. Honestly, I don't like that part of this whole thing to begin with. I didn't... Yeah. Like, I thought it was a wander without a path, not a get fucked and die. Suicide mission. I mean, in all fairness, this is the frigid north. It kind of was a suicide mission to begin with. Yeah. Do we even actually know that Jen is at the castle? We just know she was at a house. Oh no, she was in the castle. No. Wait, I thought no, she got ambushed, right? Mm hmm. So we. I mean, do we know if she's yeah. at the castle? Volmer when cried. Volmer scried upon Jen. She was oh, in some right. sort of room with a singular window. Couldn't get any other real details, but it was a room of pure ice, and she was contained in a crystal, to which at least... I don't want to go fight Elsa. <laughs> 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 Maybe we should just let it go. No. I'm getting tired of walking into the unknown. <laughs> God damn it, Astrid. <laughs> you want to build a snowman? No! God, I wish it was summer. We're lost in the woods! <laughs> <gasps> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I don't know any more titles. Yeah. But for real, like, I was fine with this when it was aimlessly wandering. But now needing to die or almost die? That's. That doesn't sit well with me. Uh uh. I did that recently. I don't want to do that again. Blame me, it's not fun. Again, more in common. Still not talking about it. Yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, on you guys then at that point, if you, I mean, it, are, are they going to be okay with the whole devil thing without doing this? What? The whole tunnel thing. Devil thing. Devil. Oh. <laughs> uh. Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. So, um, what are we going to do then? Oh, actually, this just popped up. And because Veril's tired and doesn't feel like thinking, they're just going to do it in front of everybody. They're going to check the thing on their side real quick. Forgot about that. As you check onto the side where you see the blackness and you feel the absolute brittle cold just hit your skin. Owie. Unlike before... Or you can just feel like that indent. You can just swear that where it was w blackening is now turning into a almost ashen white. That's probably not good, huh? What is that? Uh, uh yeah, I was gonna second that question. That's a very good question. Um. You, you, it's, it's been there for as long as I've 
had the whole hair issue. Worse, though. Probably. Wait, I thought, wait, doesn't everyone else know about this except for Linnea? Jack, Abilene, Linnea. It's never Uh, been shown to Jack. You're... (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's like a two-for-one deal. Okay, um, can I reiterate again? They just gave you a possible out to that, and you said no? The problem with violence is that they beat us to death. Well, I mean, maybe they'll be nice about it. They'll knock you out first before they beat you. At least they won't make it kinky. They won't drag us off and eat us once we're unconscious. We don't know these people. I mean, that's fair, but do you have any other sources? Yeah. I'm open to ideas here, but I mean, that, that looks bad. And you had yourself a BDSM session last night, like... Shut up. Sorry. (laughs) No, you're good. (laughs) <laughs> wait, I've never wait, heard wait, Daryl, wait, wait. the player, be this like aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Vir- Viral is not a morning person, and neither am I. Oh, <laughs> all my characters. <laughs> um, can can Viral just like try to poke it real quick, see if it like hurts, or is it more of just like a? Ugh. The best way. To describe it is this. This is something I've only ever experienced once, and I don't know if anybody else has experienced it. But when you when you get like a minor chunk of skin, like completely chunked off, and you poke at the scab, you can oh. feel the texture. Yeah, and it's like it is oh. one of the most sensitive sensations you have ever felt. Like, it feels like it shocks your entire arm. In that instant. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh. And you feel that in your entire, like, right side of your body. You feel like just a <laughs> poke, and it's like your entire torso just got electrocuted with pain. Yep. Ugh. Jax just kind of walked off. Sorry. And Abilene would uh, look to Linnea and kind of goes like, like I, mm, I don't, uh, you know I don't want to call him. You know I don't. But this might be a question for him. It's like, I know, I know, you and I both know this. Finding the holder trees can wait. That sounds bad. But if we call him, that might be worse. Call who? <laughs> You know how I said I have a fae boyfriend? Ah. Yeah, I, 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 we never, there's a reason I say I still have one, because we never broke up, and I can call him, (laughs) because. It's complicated, but calling him means a lot more than I can explain while we're freezing our asses off and possibly discussing you dying in this very moment. I've been dying for a while. Yeah, but that looks worse. Fair enough. Be right back. Adios. Spitballing. I I don't I don't know what you guys are gonna do about that. If you can't even do anything about that. So what about this Faye boyfriend? I'm sorry, I missed it in character and out of character. Uh that she has a manner of calling him. It's complicated, and it comes with a lot of possible consequences. But that both Abilene and Lene are both like, this is probably a question for him. But they do not want to call him. 
What kind of consequences? I have no fucking idea because he chooses a new one every time. Could we maybe just like, you know, kill him after work? What, no, what was the no. last consequence that you had? Um, if you don't mind me asking. The last one... I mean, it was... Kind of my fault. Well, okay. They, I was desperate. Alright, I was desperate. I needed help. I really needed it. And, well, he gave me the option to always be able to call him. But that also meant he's always with me. I kind of mean that literally. It's... So okay. You just see her, like, pull out the collar of her shirt, and you see her kind of reveal, like, the upper shoulder area, and you see there's this extravagant cat tattoo of what looks like to be, like, a cockatiel. He's kind of in there. He's in like a part of him. Room. That's a weird spot to be in you. I'm not going to lie. Rain consequence, way. too. A tattoo. Not just a tattoo. Look, all, all I need you to know is that if I try to get him to help us, this is going to bite me in the ass. And I have no idea if it's going to bite all of you in the ass, and not in a kinky way. What did I miss as a player? <laughs> Linnea apparently is... Her boyfriend Last time shoulder. she called upon her fae boyfriend, the consequence was that he was always going to be a part of her, to which she has a, like, a cockatiel tattoo on her shoulder, essentially speaking. Mm. Toxic boyfriend. Look, you... Get high on some fucking fey mushrooms. It's easier than you think. Jack's not there. <laughs> yeah. So, have I just been, like, cucking her boyfriend this whole oh, time? Oh, she said it openly. That's why she says, like, I'm more than willing to do, like, one night stands, but if I ever do anything more than that, they die. <laughs> so, I'm leaving it to you guys, if you want to try going home, seeing what happens with your friend here, doing this yourselves, asking the, the Goliaths that just gave you a shot, or we do the biggest Hail Mary I think we'll ever try in any and all existences where we asked my boyfriend. Or if you got any other ideas, I'm all ears. Well, I have a falling spot up there some? Anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's up to you, Barrel. I guess. Not me. Hey. <laughs> well, okay. Going home, for me at least, is out of the question. It's too late now to really give up. Uh, we can either pursue the castle then, or call in the unknown. Well, either way, it's unknown, but I don't... Well, I, I don't know. We can try the castle first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the whole... Yeah, I, I think that's good. Okay, cool. So we're going back to following the bird then, and just hoping you don't turn on us, or literally fall apart into dust, right? That's ideal. You see Linnea kind of just like turn to Abba and goes like, 
You know, sometimes my luck isn't that great. She just gives it like the most stoic deadpan stare you've ever seen. Just like that sister stare of like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> I know that stare very well. I do that stare <laughs> a lot. Well, I guess. Word, then. Bird Sparky, lead on. Is it still so a blizzard outside? Yes. Okay, it's gonna come back to the group. I had a thought. What? It's not a great one just for the sheer fact of limitation on people. Omer could maybe teleport us to the castle. He's seen where Jen's at. He knows he's seen that location. We have nothing tying us to there. There is a possibility that I pull it off, but there's also a chance that I may teleporters into a mountain. I mean, yeah, there's always risk in teleporting. At least seeing... Can you use something from Jen? Do I have anything besides... No, did I get the necklace from the lady, though? Yep. Yeah, I was like, do I have anything from Jen? Would, would Sparky count as a thing from Jen? Was it? Would it? That's an he... object, not a creature. Well, okay. Hold on. The necklace was from a random lady, right? It's from the hag. Or was it from the hag? Yeah. Okay. It's from Nightshade. Okay, I thought it was. Speaking of the hand. necklace, how, how it doing? It's strange. Like, it's kind of pulsating and up and down patternings. Like, that struggle of thought that you're having is both helping it and confusing it in an essence like you need to have a goal and yet your destination is a place you can't get to with a goal so it's like confusing itself Fair enough. Follow the bird. Yeah. so i have a question Mm -hmm. that I hesitate to ask as a player because <laughs> I kind of don't want the ramifications but I have to ask. Oh god. How's the water situation doing in this cold land? Not that great. You can melt snow to try and get some but I mean, you I will run out. I we were spending time at night melting snow and refilling our canteens. Yeah, for the most part. My question is, is the water staying liquid in our canteens? While, and as long as it's like close to your body and beneath all that covering, for the most part, it stays cool. And you can also store it in the bag of holding and it would yeah, be, do that too. be fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't think about that, Mike. You just really can't take it out for too long before it does start to really get into that frozen state. <laughs> God damn, Meryl. That's not coffee. I mean, no, what is coffee no. if not just liquid ice cream? Did you, did you get it in addition to your coffee or only that? <laughs> I did not get any ice cream. <laughs> I just, I'm so, it just, it was a surprise. It showed up with your coffee. I don't have my coffee. <laughs> you don't have coffee. You just have ice cream. I just have ice cream. Oh, no. That sounds like a win to me. They know you don't need the caffeine. No, it's you do need the caffeine. <laughs> no. Not you don't at almost eight at night. This is why they can't go to sleep till four. <laughs> it's this just, is you're going to be a crackhead later. I know. That's fine. I have to stay up and make sure they're okay. My coffee. <laughs> Are we going to go with the teleportation option? I just hope you know that it's roughly only a 25% chance I get it on point. I mean, 
what better way to follow a path blindly than to take a leap of faith and teleport there? Downside. We can't take everyone. Exits you and up to eight, I believe. Yeah, yeah and up to eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We can. One person wouldn't be able to make it. Teleport. Me should have just wagged her tail. <laughs> We are not leaving Misha, I swear to God. Well, no technically too, because you've also got Sparky. That was counting Sparky. Two, three, four, five, six with Volmer, seven, eight. Oh, I see, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah. I forgot. It's you and eight. You and eight. So nine total creatures. Yeah. <sighs> do we leave Sparky behind, or do we <clears> take him with us? I don't like that either, with him being on the ground. He seems it's susceptible to... I don't, yeah. I don't want to leave Sparky. Because he, he also has a connection to Jen. If we put someone in the bag of holding, can they <laughs> hold their breath while we teleport? Right. When we get there, we dump them out. I'd be willing to try that. They have to fit, which, no joke, would only be Misha or Avaline in wild shape. <laughs> or Vero in wild shape. Vero has no wild shape right now. If we short rest. Yeah. It's Don't we have the polymorph thing too? We do That's also true. You have polymorph orb too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a one today. Look, I remember out. stuff you forgot about. <laughs> I don't know. Crazy idea. Yeah, it is a crazy idea. I it mean, worked, though. It is something y'all want to try. How long does it take to cast the teleport? That's instantaneous, right? And, yeah. yeah, it's instant. It's one And action. so, literally, they would just be in there for a second or two. For six seconds. Yeah. Yeah. And you get ten minutes of air in there, so yeah. it's, it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's not it possible. I'm just work. saying. Yeah. Just saying. It's a 25% chance it works. Does you anyone get... volunteer for a ride <laughs> in my bag? <laughs> then just instantly hands up. <laughs> I volunteer. What animal could we turn Fen into with the polymorph orb? Easily mouse, squirrel, bird, rabbit. rabbit. Yeah, Never there's seen, so many. Like, what those little snow weasels? <gasps> could I turn her into like a little dra a little dragon that looks like Frankie? I would have to say no, only because those are drag. Those are dragons. The pseudo dragons are dragons. Oh, okay. Why do you hate me? I don't. Polymorph just specifies just a lizard peace. that looked like a dragon. Also, to be fair, it'd be probably better to use the wild shape that can get back at a short rest versus the orb, which is one. Oh, fair. Do one of our uh, druids volunteer? If we take a short rest... Tail just I... wags. Misha, do you really even understand? Tilt her head. <laughs> if we I'm can at with mental comms to Misha. <laughs> that sounds really scary and really fun. Before we do all this, we should have Volmer scry again. On Jen? Yeah. Because if you've seen it more than once, it ups the chance of him getting there. Oh, yeah, there you go. He goes from viewed once to see. Honestly, casually. Volmer would have suggested that. Seen casually be more than two times, though. I will say that. I'm just going by the wording of the spell. It's some place. I, I know, there. but still, even then, seen casually is like you've seen that maybe like five or six times. Like you've passed on through. It's like, oh, just casually passing on through. It's like, that's a little more often than viewed once. <laughs> Gotta love when the wording's vague. I mean, a fresh viewing. So that he can concentrate better. Yeah. 
go. This is a Hail Mary no matter how we look at it. Misha just barks. Is like, I'm willing. It'd be fun. Oh, fuck. I mean, part of me is like, even if we roll bad, we're blindly jumping in. We, we're, the faith, taking that leap of faith, that's what it tells us to do, right? I suppose. How many charges does Volmer have today? Three. Round. It hasn't been used in several days. It has full charges. Oh, yeah, the downside is uh, if we get off target, off target, it could take us completely off the continent. If you get, if you say off target, would just be like somewhere on continent, but God knows how far. Similar okay. area is where That's... you could end up at the okay, fucking let's mountain try this. Keely. <laughs> so in that root cellar that we were in, mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing. Floor, walls, everything is Halderwood, right? Yep. Okay. So let's try our best to hack off a sliver of the wall. And if all else fails, we use a sliver from that wall to teleport back to this back route. to the... Dalmar, you got real smart all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> We also do have yeah, some already from Frankie chewing on a chair leg, so. Yeah. Right, but we can't guarantee that the random chair leg was made from this wood. We have to carve off a sliver from the walls to guarantee it was from this specific root cellar. Okay. I mean, I'm down for that. I can imagine Fen's plan. already got her fucking sword out. <laughs> She's like, let's go! <laughs> So that would be at least a plan B. Fed, go ahead and insane. make me a strength check real quick. That blade is bouncing like nothing else. Like you are striking pure un like untampered steel. It is just bouncing. You're not even leaving a scratch on the surface of these walls. I'm going to try to carve off some with the psychically coated metal dagger. Make a dexterity check. A. A little above a five. Even with hey, a 16. As you are trying to carefully try to see if you can get it any sort of cut, anything at all, it refuses your blade. And Linnea kind of just like, mm, they weren't kidding when they said it was harder than steel and needs the best craftsmen to work on it, huh? Fuck. Yes, Fen? What? Oh, yeah, so when I rage, I get advantage on strength checks. You. May I rage you. and try again? You can. I imagine bouncy sword off tree is really just... Physical. Infuriating. <laughs> 21. And. Gotta roll again for advantage. Because it would be a second attempt. She, she did the 6. Oh, did she get 6? Oh, she did again. Oh, yeah. I, I, I saw the 6. I was like, that's her old roll. With a 21. Putting everything you've got. Roaring into this strike. As you stick the blade into the wood, and it sinks in a quarter of an inch. Hmm. Is there a piece of the broken furniture around that there I could is use old as... and decrepit. That I could use as a chisel? Because iron sharpens iron. Alder wood sharpens alder wood. There's splinters. They're not exactly sharpened, but there are splinters around, especially from one that, uh, Fen had shattered the chair from. There are, like, chunks on the edge are still sharp. So I'm going to grab one, one of my spare daggers 
and just using the pommel and literally just start chiseling, trying not to literally stab myself in the face. <laughs> Actually, do I have a crowbar or something? I think I have a crowbar. I have a crowbar. Okay. I'll grab my crowbar and use that as a hammer rather than... No, wait. I have an actual fucking hammer. Okay. <laughs> there I'll you use go. my actual hammer as a hammer. You know what? Yeah. Since I say you, you're using this equipment in, in such a manner, I'll give you another dexterity check with advantage this time. Sweet. One and two. Ten into ten? Really? Ooh. Uh. While no progress is made once again, there is something that you partially notice in this method, though, when you're trying to get this out. And you would manage to get a singular... Not exactly a carving, but a dent into the wood. And you kind of take note as you try to analyze that as best as possible. And with your passive perception being mixed into that, you can kind of tell us, like, this is... The grain is near enough impossible to see, but there is some way to figure it out. It's just about having the proficiency and mannerisms to know how to do this. Okay, then I'm going to try to... How much of this would Delmar know? So I'm thinking as a player, try to find a way to use the end grain and rip it apart from the end grain. Go ahead and make a check. Okay. That's a four. Carpentry is not Delmar's skill. He has never cared about carbon wood. No. Are there... Are there any stones, like, from outside? Or a splinter of the wood that got shattered when the tree fell? You do know that there are several chunks of shattered pieces on the outside. It's just most of the big ones are the only ones you can see, given that it's about two and a half to three feet of layer of snow easily. Uh, can I, like, firebolt and melt some of the snow so that I can see if I can find any smaller pieces? Go ahead and just make an investigation check. takes time, and as you go fireballing, trying to find as That's small fire. piece you fire possibly bolt. can. Fireball, sorry. <laughs> uh, you do eventually find one piece that, well, not exactly small by any means. At least it is about dagger in size okay. worth. So at least, at least manageable in grip. I found a piece outside, guys. That's sure. Right? It's theoretically from this tree, so yeah. yeah. Homer. Theoretically, as long as it counts. And if need be, I could stab the, a bitch with it. Yeah. I'll just bring up the point real quick. That is also a piece that we don't know if it came from the stump or from the tree. If it came from the tree, we could appear on anywhere along that line. That's Follow it. it back to the tree. That's okay. It gives us a location. True. That's all we need. We're really doing this Hail Mary, huh? I think so. Jack? They scry on a first case. Oh, no, that's I need more then can do so. That way I can die with more knowledge. Bare minimum, if it takes a couple days, be more familiar with the place. And I'm going to spend the time meditating with my spirit and asking it, like, any advice here? None that he can tell. This is... This is... Magic's beyond his understanding. He was never a magic dude. What yes, can you tell me about crafting this whole wood? But get back to answer that later. Mm hmm. No, you do now. Well, I'm interrupting someone else. I just wanted to say, like, I'm oh, focusing on thing while you're doing I... thing. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I just want to make sure you, like, don't forget your thing because that happens. Don't worry, I won't forget it. <laughs> okay, um,. During this time, can I just, like, investigate Frankie and just check, make sure he's not weird? 
Make an investigation check on Frankie. He has Alderwood Cajone. <laughs> As far as you can tell, looking him over, kind of keeping a quick pad down, he's still your boy. <laughs> but, Delmar, asking that question, as he kind of tries to think on it for a moment, he tries to dig into that analytical side, maybe try and see if he can find any information. He was never a carver, and he was never... The man to ask about that information is the best that you can get out of him. And he does feel bad about oh. it, though. Because kind of like a, pr a warrior's pride of a, like, I never learned how to make my own weapons, which you would imagine a warrior should be able to do. Well, it's okay. But with Volmer scrying upon Jen once more, being able to see her still encapsulated in that crystal of ice still in the room with the blizzard raging on the outside or sorry it's actually a much gentler snow wherever she is trying to take in as much information as possible can before kind of coming back and saying all right misha into the bag and you see Misha just instantly kind of just jump to asher and as she Forms herself into a little mouse and just lands in the palm before just whoop, into the bag. Okay, let's go. I'm opening one on one comms with Misha before she disappears in the bag. Does it? Cross planes? I was gonna say that. Does it work on the same pool? The only on plane plane? Oh, I wouldn't assume so. I wouldn't assume so either, but it's possible. But either way, even if it cuts I mean, off immediately. Wouldn't do that anyway. Yeah. He doesn't uh -huh. understand planes. That's just uh -huh. the bag. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll figure that out later. That's but, Volmer. D100. Let's see how this goes. Okay. Oh that my God. Is that is bad or that's good? good? That's on target. Yep. It's 75. You see a... I thought you had to press. Come from, yeah. You see Volmer kind of take a deep breath and concentrates hard on the Helmo teleportation, as each of you are encapsulated and taken by the mystical force. Sparky giving up a like shocked and confused call for the instant, as each of you come back in that moment. Your breath kind of returning to you. I need everyone to make a quick constitution save with them real quick. With the plus two. Yep, with plus two from plus. <coughs> that's good, that's good. Dalmar, even with plus two, that's a fail. Mm, straight up, just not coming through. Uh, I got Weird. Extreme. 22. That's Jack, Ash and Fen, Homer, uh, that's Feral. You've got... Misha. So far, Dalmar is the only one who has failed. Everyone's rolling fucking 20 up. Fine. That's a fail. Oh, and Sparky. You don't have a sheep, but you do also have to make one yourself. He's fine. So, Linnea, Abilene, and Dalmar. As all of you land in this room, you feel your feet hit solid ground. The brutal wind blowing upon each of you no longer in that instant. However, you all instantly feel a far more brutal and sheer concentration of cold and as most of you hold yourselves in that instant Dalmar, Linnea, and Abilene instantly take a point of exhaustion oh shit okay that's as better than I thought what was coming each of you 
feel this yeah. impossibly deep, frigid cold overcome each of you. You just can easily see you're in a chamber, large and wide, with the singular window shining a light upon the crystalline, frozen form of Jen. Is there is there a fireplace you know? anywhere? There is no fire anywhere. Oh. I need to. And that's what we'll pick up next week. Fuck. <laughs> well, it worked. Hey, it's a hail mary that fucking paid off. Oh, yeah, I was sitting there thinking like, oh fuck. I had twenty five percent chance. <laughs> At bare minimum, if it didn't work, I was gonna make Volmer look every single day. <laughs> uh huh. Until it became seen casually. Yeah. Little babies. I did not. I didn't see the blur. That's a little bit of black go <laughs> running by. I did it. That one is socks. She cannot <laughs> eat I don't... Is your sister still in there? Is she okay? <laughs> I'm gonna have to fish her sister out. I need to check on her. <sighs> but yeah, that's... That's a Hail Mary that paid off. That is a Hail Mary that paid off. Yeah, because Jack would not have done the whole fucking dying thing. I'm sorry, but no. I mean, again, that's why, obviously, Loki as a DM, kind of like uh, Linnea was laying out the options. It's like, y'all got four fucking options here, unless you got any other ideas. Yeah. And none of them were exactly I'm great options. Taking a blind leap of faith and not knowing where we were going yep. actually fucking worked. <laughs> Yippee. Oh, I, so, I don't know if that worked because it was supposed to work or if it worked because we just rolled really well. Dumb fucking luck. 25% chance. Sometimes, sometimes it just fucking works. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I won't, I won't acknowledge your presence. No. <laughs> just a super quick question. I'm pretty sure I know the answer given how what you have now experienced in this room. Are you letting me shut out of the bag right now? Um... Yeah. She, she has, has 10, ten minutes. Yeah. Has ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she has 10 minutes. Uh, I think I'll keep her in there for just a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of figured. figure out how to not be freezing to death. Yeah, I figured as much. I was like, the moment you feel this cold, I'm like, they're probably not going to let Misha out, but just want to make sure. Yeah. So, can I still communicate with Misha? So, I looked up the Kalistar thing. It says you have to be within... Uh, be equal to ten times your level. So, other plane is not. It does. It doesn't mention anything about other planes. So it's kind of the ruling on is that to the bag of well, holding or to the plane itself. Well, but the the problem there is that the bag of holding is a completely separate plane. The reason why it doesn't say that is because if there's like, yeah, if there's like a gate where you can see through it into another plane, <laughs> there are some spells that break that way. But this wouldn't be one of those. If I open the bag, can he talk to her? <laughs> I'd loosely argue yes, if that was the intent. <laughs> I did not. Baby. Oh, it's on top. <gasps> Look baby. at the kitty. Hey, Fen, you're missing the kitty. Look at it. No, I have <laughs> an internet connection, so I can't see the baby. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Bad days. That's babies. Oh my god, that should not have worked. <laughs> I yeah. Oh that. yeah, no, that's the other thing too, is I me giving Linnea's fucking Hail Mary attempt too. Yeah. It worked? Yeah. 